Oh, hi, honey. Hey. Uh, hi. so cold today. Okay. Yeah, hey, uh, you're filming, right? Yep. Welcome back, friends and family, anybody else on YouTube, Ann and Ty, Ty, Ann. Um, on the day, I think today's January, Saturday, January 9th, I think. So that's day 38, day 38, I guess, of our RV travels, RV adventure. Um, we're currently camping in Cedar Creek Park, which is on Lake Whitney, uh, which is, um, I think the actual town is called Whitney, Texas, just west of Hillsboro. So that being Hillsboro, I think is about halfway between like Dallas and Austin, roughly, maybe a little closer to Dallas. Anyway, uh, uh, it was beautiful here yesterday, the day before, like in the low 70s, and now it's it's just dropped today. The temperature's really dropping, and we're wanting to head towards Austin, so that's uh, that's where we're going. We actually, um, we probably haven't made a video in a while. We were down in Houston, Galveston area a couple weeks ago, and we were headed towards Corpus Christi, and we heard about the tornadoes in Garland and Rowlett, Texas, so we actually turned around and went, uh, went to Garland and Roulette, linked up with a group there and helped with the tornado recovery. And actually uh, lived with the guy who we were working with in the tornado recovery, lived, uh, well, we parked out front of his place, but staying with a family in Plano, Texas. So great, great area, great group of people. Uh, a lot of people came out and volunteered, so thankful for that. But uh, anyway, now we're near, as I said, we're near, uh, we're near Hillsboro or Whitney, Texas, headed towards Austin. Right now we are, uh, we're about to leave the park, um, so we're coupling, we're getting the, the trailer ready. I guess I can go over, for those who are interested, the whole process with uh, getting the trailer ready. Um, first of all, one of the most important things, I guess, and maybe we can go on the trailer here, we haven't locked it up yet, closed it up, um, is especially where we're going. It's pretty gonna, messy. It's pretty Sorry. messy, but most of that is because we pulled everything out and tried to get it low. Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, and I guess it's this way pretty much everywhere we've seen, just the roads, roads are pretty rough these days. So we're going about two hours down to Austin, and even highways, or even, whether it's county roads, um, the park roads, even the highways, some of these areas are just super rough. So um, one of the most important things is, is uh, anything that's not really secure, that's heavy, especially like, uh, uh, dishes or, or any kind of like liquid like we have jars of food a lot of food items especially if they're heavy to bring them down so if they're in here we can go in and I don't know if you can see one of the, another one of the reasons we're moving is we're out of power now All right, we ran our batteries down we're normally good for about a week um, but uh, on a charge on our battery and we have a solar panel but we've been running around during the day so we haven't had our solar panel to charge so it might be a little dark but um but if you can see here, so we kind of, especially anything heavy or liquid, kind of get it out of the upper cabinets and drop it down. One of those is it'll prevent, it'll it'll lessen the sway of the vehicle because you'll have a lower center of gravity. Another thing is, um, you know, just moving around, making turns. Again, we take it real easy when we're driving, but especially if you kind of pop a curb maybe on accident, which we did once, mm -hmm. I did once, I guess I should say, <laughs> and then it drops back down, stuff can come out of the cabinets. Um, just makes a mess. So a lot of heavy items, um, especially like we have cast iron, like a cast iron pot, like we put that in the car first of all, just because stuff like that will try to shift and move around. We take take a lot of things out of these upper cabinets, drop, about, drop, drop them uh, down to lower our center of gravity. So there's a lot of stuff underneath this table, which table's normally here, we drop that down. We also secure the, um, all the uh, blinds have like hooks on them to where they're not moving around and swaying the whole time um just little tips that we learned early on there's like a glass dish i guess that most microwaves have like a glass plate right here normally in most microwaves bring that out because otherwise it'll be toppling around in there while you're driving um and the toilet so rv toilets like when you flush them um then they you can also if you hold the pedal it'll also kind of fill up with water all right so what you want to do is you want to flush it real quick and get all the water out because otherwise when you're driving the water in the toilet can actually slosh and slosh out. Or um, on uh, discontinued water. like Or, yeah, disconnect. That's even better. So you disconnect your water first, and then you let it flush, and that water goes out. 
and so then there's no water in there. That's that's a good point. That's mm -hmm. generally what we do. But either way, do it real fast or or disconnect your water. Um, try to try to drain the water out of the toilet uh, to where it won't slosh her out. I don't think there's it's anything. Very else. messy. Basically, so the idea is just get everything that is up in the cabinets, especially heavy item, drop them down as low as possible, and try to center them also. Um, we have, I think it's called an E2, but we have stabilizer bars on ours, which really help, especially on the highway, definitely in high winds, and I'll show those here in a second. Um, so that helps, but as I said, um, one of the main things is drop your center of gravity, so drop things down and kind of try to get them lined up a little center. And another tip is uh, try to fill your cabinet oh yeah so it doesn't move yeah right? yeah so even if you have light items up in the cabinets um try to pat them a little bit otherwise they'll slide like we had some books up here which we probably should have dropped down anyway but they would slide up and down the length of the cabinets or you can put separators in there as well and one other thing i forgot just another tip because i know we forgot Wait. it is we have so, uh, uh okay oh sorry okay we have a a, a two-way um refrigerator so it runs off of either propane or electric power. And uh, sometimes when we're uncoupling, say we're at some place hooked up to power, and then we uncouple and we forget to switch this back over to propane. So always check your refrigerator before you take off, especially if it's gonna be a long drive. Um, we can move outside real quick. We'll just go over the outside process. One of the things I wanna mention yeah, I guess we were all shaky on the other ones, didn't it? <laughs> it's real windy. Hopefully, uh, it's real windy. Hopefully, the audio will come out all right. But the jack stands. Always raise the jack stands up before you try to couple. Because if you're if you're doing the main tongue jack and moving that, you're putting a lot of weight on that rear jack, or it just won't go properly. Um, um, so put the scissor jacks up. And the other thing with these, so what I'm talking about, these, these are stabilizer jacks right underneath i don't have them extended right now but they basically drop down and we have uh we have blocks of wood that those goes go on but these aren't meant to like lift your trailer okay you want to use uh when you're when you're leveling your trailer you want to use your main uh tongue jack right here and then this, for the side to side we actually put like a one by um actually it's a two by but a, a two by ten or i think that one's a two by eight we put it under the wheel. They have a lot fancier kinds, like they're lighter. I don't know. There are a lot fancier kinds out there, but that works for us. So if we're if our side to side isn't level, we just put that in front of one of the tires, whichever one needs to be higher, pull up a little bit right on top of it, and we're good. And then we chalk the other one. So they do have nicer ones that will level it and chalk it better. We use blocks of wood. It's worked for us. Um, the other thing with that is don't drive off without your blocks. So we <laughs> one off time we, we forgot. We've done that one time. We went back and <laughs> don't drive off without your blocks. Um, oh, uh, another thing, and this is something we do, and I think it's highly recommended with, uh, with the RVs. There's actually a sticker on here. We always, before we take off somewhere, um, we check the tire pressure not only on the vehicles, uh, on, on our, our vehicle, but also on the trailer, and then uh, and then we also check all the wheel lugs to make sure that that's torqued properly. Um, to make sure that something hasn't loosened up on the road. But just as one, it's just as a precaution, and then two, when you're going around and doing that, you can also check other things. You know, so it kind of gets you in a rhythm. It's good to have a process or kind of your checklist as you go down. Um, as you, because when you're checking those, you can kind of check part of the underbelly of it and, and things like that so uh, um, anything else that's that's just the real quick and here's here's where we where we couple um, or here's 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 our what we use as the uh, the stabilizer bars I was talking about it's an E2 I think I forgot who makes it E2 hitch anyway this is come this is coming really in handy um, especially for when you're going down the highway but also um, if you've got kind of a lighter vehicle, so now our tow package is fine for this weight because it's a very lightweight trailer, but this also puts less tongue weight on your vehicle and on your actual hitch, so it doesn't push down quite as hard. So it kind of it kind of evens things out and stabilizes the weight, um, and, and that's that's really helped us out for some areas that we're getting in and out. So you you don't want to be like this when you're going over hills and things. Um, what else? Again, kind of have a process with, with how you're hooking things up so then you know. And I like to go through 
after I've done everything, I like to go through like kind of a counterclockwise and really touch everything. So I know, okay, I'm hooked here, hooked here. Um, if you want to show, if you want to zoom, so this cable right here, this is for your trailer brake so that if your vehicle, if your trailer becomes detached somehow from your trailer, um, this will pull and actuate the brakes on the trailer so it doesn't, so it doesn't uh, veer and tumble. But um, the only thing with this is a lot of people hook this cable. See, we got a little carabiner. A lot of people just hook this right on to their tow chain. Um, and even RV places do that when they, because it's just convenient whenever they give it to you. But um, if it's hooked to here and this comes un, uh, unhooked, uh, you know, it's not effective anymore. So definitely recommend actually hooking this, uh, the brake cable, up to your vehicle. Um, and then that's our that's our power cable. Make sure that's kind of hooked in. But uh, other than that, I think I think we're good. That's how we do it. I'm that's sure there, you know, there's some fancier gadgets. There's some better ways. It depends. But again, I always do one final walk around, kind of lay hands on everything, making sure I've got all my chocks, all my tools um, before I button up and take off. Uh, anything else you want to add? So thanks again. This again, this is Cedar Creek Park near Whitney, Texas, on Lake Whitney. We're getting ready to go, heading to Austin. Thanks everybody again for watching. I think that's it. That's what else it. you got? Uh, nothing. We will Good. see there we'll again. We'll try to shoot a little bit more. As I said, we didn't get much while we were working in Garland and Rowlett. You know, we didn't want to take a lot of video of the uh, the devastation, really, or what. Well, first of all, we were working real hard, so we didn't have time. Second of all, we really wanted to be sensitive towards the families. You know, these were their homes, these were their lives, these were their memories, and it just didn't feel right um, necessarily taking video of it, uh, you know, while they're there kind of in mourning. So, uh, so didn't really shoot anything for a while, but we're back at it again, headed towards California. We're going to keep on down the road. Thanks again. Thank you.